this view. Yeah, look at the angle. Yeah. They, they, they must share is as deep as the sea no matter how rough things may come to be you and me we're family sing home hey long for the ride home hey i'll stay by your side home hey you'll always be In the last vlog, we were joined by Woody's dad, um, and he came on the passage, which was two days from Malta to Tunisia. So we've changed course now to go slightly north, but to change course, we had to tack. As we struggled to tack, um, the sails were flogging a bit, so the leech of the main sounds ripped so we filled it away so it doesn't get any worse so hopefully they can repair it when we get to Tunisia but so now we're sailing on head sail but to be quite honest it's much better on head sail going downwind anyway so it's uh, about two o'clock in the morning um, we're on a night watch between Malta and Tunisia uh, it's a very dark night, um, not much happening, but we do have an unidentified vessel approaching with no AIS and no lights on. It is uh, showing quite a strong radar signal, so um, we'll have to see what happens. Kind of between Tunisia and Libya, and uh, it has been reported that there are um, refugees in the area. I wouldn't have thought tonight would be a the right conditions for anybody to leave the north coast of Africa but then again you never know. Unfortunately it's on the collision course with us so I can't turn any higher to wind even though we've got the engine on and we've only got the headsail out. Um, the only thing I can do is slow down but I don't want to confuse the guy so uh, just got to keep an eye on it really. Turned out to be a massive cargo vessel and he uh, nearly took the paint off our bows. He wasn't going to stop, but he was doing about 16 knots. That was a close one. Um, we've got 60 miles to go and um, it's now morning and I'm keeping nice and toasty warm. Look at my blanket. Oh yes. Everyone's asleep. And um, we'll be there in probably about 10 or 12 hours. Good wind. We had it all behind us, and now it's all um, close hauled to get in. About an hour and a half away. That's subject to um, the engine not breaking down. Because things that happened last time, it can happen again. <laughs> not one of those epic passages again. It was the whole thing, like downwind, corkscrew, screwing, like the first part, and then beating upwind for the second part. It's completely. Well, we knew it was going to happen because we had the weather forecast. So now we're in a completely new continent. We're going to be in Tunisia really soon, which is North Africa. Our mainsail, which hasn't been repaired since we've got the boats, um, we knew it was a bit weak, but that's got a rip that got worse and it's got a new rip, so I don't know whether that can be repaired or not. So we couldn't really use that most of the way. We didn't want it to completely get ripped. Um, and we've been looking, trying to look after our old Genoa to make sure that keeps going. <laughs> Yeah, once again we sort of limp into our ports with um, you know, things that have been broken or things just working. But that seems to be the story of our life really. But the great thing about getting to Tunisia is that we're here to do lots of work and um, hopefully it'll be in our budget and um, then we can carry on. So Tunisia's up there, it's only about 10 miles away now I expect. Monastia Marina, Monastia Marina, this is Haddock, 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 over. Monastir Marina, Monastir Marina, this is Haddock, 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 over. They do say there's no one there just to go like on a fuel pontoon. 
turns out actually that the harbour master there said they don't often answer the VHF anyway, and I think it was broken at the time, so that's probably why. The last communication that we had with the project manager um, who is going to do the work on our boat said something in French about seeing him, seeing him in the morning. Um, it turns out that he meant take the boat to Port La Peche, which is a mile down the coast. Apparently we're in the Rug Marina. We have to move about a mile down the coast to a fishing bay. We're getting attacked by pirates at the moment, so we've got to watch out. That's what happened. Yeah, all right. Woody likes to be a bit dramatic sometimes. So today... Pirates! He thinks we're in the Rug Marina and we're being attacked by pirates. Pirates! Woody, what have you just forgotten this time? Okay, so yeah, this is us just coming into Monastir Fishing Harbour. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this place. Don't drive me back to the other one because um, I've spent hours in there and most of my life in Tunisia so far has been spent in either the customs, the port police or the Garde Nationale. So I don't know where we're going. I think this is maybe the local one. Yeah. You think it's different to Cleopatra Marine? Uh, yeah, it is a bit. Yeah, it's more of an industrial one. There's pirate ships around as well. Oh, here we go. Yeah, double bar, wait, I don't know, an hour ago I was in customs, then I was in port police, then I was in Garde Nationale, and then next to me I was on the back of the guy's motorbike from the marina to get back on the boat to get here quickly. The boat was brought in, then we were rushed in another car to go and pay for the lift out. Came back and we were like, everyone off the boat! We had to get all the kids off the boat in about five minutes because they were just lifting it. So the boat was lifted out, it's moved over here, they're, they're just propping it up now. And um, yeah, it's suddenly happened really fast, I can't quite believe how fast it's happened. But now we've got to try and um, communicate with um, our lovely friend Monsef about what we need doing. Um, and our French is rubbish really, so we need to maybe brush up on French. The bottom needs sanding and anti-fouling, the keel needs a really good sand and scrape, um, and also maybe epoxy, anti-foul. Um, we need a solar arch made. Um, so we can use solar panels rather than relying on a generator. Um, we've got some fiberglass work that needs repairing. We've also got now a ripped sail that needs repairing, so the whole boat needs a good fit out really.
going to the toilet. There isn't a light. Um, we were hoping to stay on the boat in the yard uh, while the work was going on because that, well, that would save us a bit of money but um, it turns out the facilities weren't really set up for that kind of thing. Is that the toilet or the shower? That's the shower, there's the toilet. Mm. <laughs> I mean we could rough it but not rough it that much really while we're trying to teach the kids as well. It was all a bit of a, a rush getting the boat out of the water and we didn't have time to sort anything out but we were really grateful to Woody's dad who let us stay in the hotel with him until we managed to sort ourselves out. We arrived in Tunisia just when the Ramadan was coming to an end and the festival of Ayid was just beginning. Monday to see how it's all going and um, we just thought oh there's no one on it there's no one working on it but then um, we came closer and realized the keel has gone right back to the metal so we're pretty impressed and feeling happy <laughs> so at the moment our boat is um, in the yard so it's not in the water so you can't pump your toilets out because um, it just goes into the yard. Um, now before we got lifted I thought that we'd empty the, I had to empty the toilets and um, expected no one to go to the toilet but somebody has gone to the toilet so um, this toilet stinks and it's got a bit of wee in it and I'm sure there's poo in there somewhere. So how to get out because it's going to get worse over the next three weeks. So the idea is what's going to happen is Woody is going to stand under the boat, he gets the best jobs, with the bucket and he's going to hold it up against the outlet and I'm going to pump it through and hose it and put some disinfectant and stuff like that. So we're kind of going to, I'm not going to, yeah I'm going to pump it out but I'm going to hose the water in. So maybe I should turn it off before it's going to fill up the water a bit. It's a small bucket. Yeah it's a small bucket. <laughs> How big's the bucket Woody? Yeah, so, but the holding tank's open. Is it? Yeah. Oh, right. So whatever's in there is in the pipes, not in the tank. Well, it's a two metre pipe. So you've got two metres of about two inch pipe. Okay. Yep. That would probably fill the bucket. is not all about having G&Ts on deck. Okay, animal purists, look away now. Varenka is about to tell you what she's just done to our beautiful animal. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd just brighten up the galley a bit. And um, so I got some Ron Seal tile paint 
and um, I thought I'd test it on the back and the walls because the walls won't really get much wear and tear to see how um, sturdy it was and I think it's come up nice and bright actually I think it brightens up that corner and um, I'd quite like to do all of it actually which I might do you know we get kicked off the ammo forums for this don't you the modern ammos have a bit brighter sort of interior and um, I just find it was all just too much and a bit dark and also you couldn't clean it so well but like this you can see easier and you can clean it a bit better you know Henry Amel will be turning in his grave right now Henry Amel wouldn't even notice <laughs> This is too much. She's too much with the headliner and the brown tiles and the flecked sofa. It's just the connect. It's no, the curtains. No, that's the other thing. I'd like to replace them as well. So this is. It's not too bad, really. I mean, it does sort of fit in with the wood. So it isn't the end of the world. But I just thought, when are we next going to be a place where we could do it? It's just. It's so woollen as well. It's like kind of winter. I kind of. I could live with them. It's not top of the list by far. It's way at the bottom. But. We're in Chilisra at the moment and maybe we could get it done, um, you know, a good price. It's just what colour though, because with children it's going to get, I don't want to be precious about it. What do you think, Woody? I kind of agree you with like you, it? but I'm just worried we're kind of spoiling a classic design. <gasps> classic. Yes. I don't know, a bit of a refurb, maybe. Tunisia is a great country because it's very different to what we used to. Um, there's some areas that are really quite grand and well kept and other areas that seem more neglected. Um, maybe more on the outskirts where there's rubbish everywhere and there's a lot of plastic which doesn't help towards the plastic pollution. Often we try to pick up three bits of plastic. It's almost quite overwhelming. I mean, we didn't even know where to start with it really. Quite a few people ask if um, Tunisia is safe to travel in and go to after the 2015 terrorist attacks on the beach. Well, all I can say is there is plenty of security around, um, on the beach, in the hotels. And I suppose when we travel, we tend to mix with the locals anyway, and we tend to avoid areas that are mainly designated just for Westerners. So, you know, we felt fine. We're at a beach in Tunisia. What are you drinking? Mint tea. There was a guy walking around the beach selling mint tea. Is it, is it strong? Let's have a look at it. Ooh. What's that, Erin? It's the leaves. Hold it up in the sun then. Oh, nice. Everyone thinks we're really weird because of our blonde hair. So wherever we go, we get stared at. Yeah. <laughs> it's very really nice to see all the Tunisians out. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing, boys? The more time we spent in Tunisia, the more we wanted to experience Tunisian life. So we're going to go into this building, it's where the children all learn about the Koran. So we've been invited to go and have a look, so we're going to go and see what's going on. We're at like a school where the kids learn about the Koran, because they have to learn the whole holy text. Interpretation, uh, Quran. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That is a big library. Rowan, yeah. would you be able to read all that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Uh, how, how, uh, do you know how you learn, Ewan, every day? Yeah. When you do your letters. Oh, you have to open it the other way. Mm. OK, so this, they do the same thing, but in Arabic. Mm. They have to practice writing Arabic letters. The Arabic books open the other way around. Oh. Yes. Uh, del, del, oh, oh. Can you say that to me? Yes. So this is the, it shows you where to put your tongue to say it. Where is it from? From um, Brighton oh. in England. You know it? South of England. Yes, south yes. of London. Yeah. Are you from Monastery? Yes. Yeah. In Islam we have five yes. prayers. Prayers. Yes, prayers. So this is where everyone does the prayers through the day? Yes. Okay. And how long do the prayers last? The prayer? Maximum five minutes, ten minutes. Five minutes, ten minutes, yes. yeah. Yes. I was born in Austria. Austria. In Austria? Yeah. My, mo um, my mother is not Tunisian. Oh. Okay. Uh, and I, 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 become, I come to Tunisia. Uh, for me, it was a great uh, experience. Islam, for me, Islam is a type of life in all, in all things. In, educa in education, in, uh, in praying, in a relation with God, in relation with the humans, and so. So it's like a way of life? Yes. You want yes. to bring it into your whole life? Yes, yes. Do you want to hear some Quran? Yeah. I can read some Quran. Lovely, yeah. <laughs> we were excited to find a local market as well where we could stock up. Monasteries Market. I don't know which day it's open, but I love this place. It's got so much stuff here, and I want to buy it all. But um, we're just getting some snacks to take back to the hotel. Okay, this is like brioche, and this is bread. I think that's olive bread. Chocolate cookies, something. Yeah. Woody wanted to try this very sweet, sickly, fatty looking thing, which is in here, and it's so sticky, sticky you have to put it in another bag. Shrama, with chips, a sort of gyros type, gyros type shrama with chips. We're in Tunisia, North Africa, and we just had to. Have, we just went to go have the street food, and now we're having some street donuts for pudding. Grandad left, so 
So we found ourselves an apartment which was a little bit further east in Monastir Marina, a little bit further away from Port La Peche. After we found our apartment, it was almost like life could be in a traditional family back at home where Woody went off to work down the port and, um, and I'd be a stay-at-home mum. The children adopted the local stray cats. and the homeschooling routine carried on. While our boat is being taken out of the water, we're staying in this apartment. Where are we staying, Ewan? We're staying in an apartment that's really small and annoying. Small and annoying, and um, Woody thinks it's cheap, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's not great. I mean, I, okay, it's not our interior, what we'd expect. I mean, if you look at the wardrobes, it's kind of very green. So we've got the chest of drawers over here, which is kind of an angle, it's one of Woody's pet hates. The tiles, yeah, they're a bit green. Okay, and, um, and the kitchen, yeah, it's kind of very blue, very blue, and um, the wiring system's not great. Okay, I'm gonna show you the wiring system. When we cook, what we have to do is we have to unplug the fridge from over there and then put our extension cable in. And then we have to plug in the fridge into there so I can plug the cooker, which is here, into there. I'm sure I got electric shock when I sort of touch that cooker. Yeah, I think there might be a problem with the earthing. Because every time I take the plug out down there, the metal spike sort of comes out, the earthing spike. I don't think that's very good. But other than that, yeah, we've kind of stocked up on everything uh, for a couple of weeks here while our boat is being repaired. Dinner. 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 Tunisian beer. Tunisian yeah. beer. Oh, and pudding. Some really nice Tunisian, um, what do you call it? Like, it's not really, but it's more like a sort of um, baked or tart or posh version is from Japani. So, what we've got here is um, so the actually, catch up on the last thing, is I was getting electric shocks from. Um, well, not just the pan, but actually touching the food, I would get electric shock, I couldn't taste the food. So I ran up the guy to get electricity round, so he came round and he took the element bit apart and he kind of taped it up again. So now I've set up this little kind of cooking section with, um, basically it's got like two plastic chairs, plastic good, and one of the shelves I've kind of put on there and then I'm balancing that on it, so it's kind of working all right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so sometimes when you turn the cooker off, it trips out the whole electric, so I have to go back on the panel and turn it on. It means something else is wrong, but at least I'm not getting electric shocks. Ta-da! We have light!
Wait a minute. I can't do that. Wait. Rubbish that's strewn about. Oh, strewn about, isn't it? Oh my god, it. was great to stay there until we managed to sort out an apartment. Is that right? With um, an apartment. apartment. I'm just now. We are crossing continents. The mothership drift out. You and me, we're family. No matter how far away we've grown to be, we travel on to unknown destinies. But you and me will still be family. Simple. Thanks again to all the patrons. I hope you enjoyed my first lens post. Um, if anyone else wants to get involved with the making of these videos, then please do sign up as well. Otherwise, keep watching and keep sharing these videos. Thanks. And if you want to do it, Your side home. Hey, you'll always be.